Right, so it is day 157, I think, of my attempt to plant a tree every single day for 2023, but because I was away, we're going to be doing plantings 143 and 144 uh, today. So let's get... Right, so for day 143, we're going to be replacing a dead uh, Casarina, which is one of the Australian beefwood trees, I think, uh, which has died and there's just a stump left and it was in an area where it could have given potentially a little bit of shade. Some trees that don't want deep shade, they just want a little bit of light shade and so we're going to be replacing that with something that can be pruned, I feel, to give just about the right type of shade and also hopefully uh, be quite architectural as well. So we're going to be replacing it with Terminalia mantle, which is one of the uh, Madagascan umbrella trees, sometimes called a Madagascan almond, but I don't think it actually produces an edible seed unlike Terminalia catapa, which is the Indian almond. Um, but this is going to hopefully spread out in very neat layers, which this species usually does, and those should actually interact with a very elderly grapevine, which has been really struggling the last few years. I know it's at least 40 years old because my grandmother planted it, and the last opportunity she would have had to do that is 43 years ago. Um, and it has never really produced good fruit. It's quite uh, sour fruit, so I think it would make quite good wine, but it's been really struggling the last few years. I don't know if something about the sun has changed, something about just the weather has changed a little bit too much for it, and it's really just not enjoying life. So I'm hoping by giving it a little bit of light shade, and also this tree is a really good one for climbers to go over because those flat layers, you can sort of train them to stay at a layer. I'm planning to probably top this, so we'll have two quite well separated layers, but if the grape can climb up into that, rather than along the fence that it's been on, which is slowly falling down, um, then it should have a sort of permanent scaffold that it can spread out on. You might notice there's rubble all around this hole. This isn't to protect the Terminalia. They're, they should be pretty resistant to any of the subterranean nibblers, even going at this time of year, which will stress it out. Um, this is because one of the companion plants I'm putting in is an aloe, which is a non-stemming aloe. So I'm hoping it will sucker better in the soil than it has been in a pot. Um, I've got another one in a pot which hasn't been doing anything much, um, so I'm going to try one out in the soil, but to do that with a non-stemming aloe is really just asking for trouble with the mole rats, and this is an area the mole rats don't use very often, but even so, just to protect this one, because I only have the two, I am going to be putting rubble all around the base of the hole, and then that should be sliding in there nicely. It's pre-rooted, so it shouldn't be an issue with the water. I am also hoping this will trigger it to flower, because it hasn't flowered yet, so I do not know which aloe this is. Um, because it's just one from the council nursery. So then, additionally to that, I'm gonna be putting in something I very much do know what it is, because I took one little cutting a few years back and now I have hundreds of them. So this is the Tugela Cliffs Calanco. This is Calanco longiflora, which should form a nice little toxic barrier. It'll also be a nice uh, ground cover, and yeah, it'll have a nice little yellow flower, which should be attractive to a bunch of pollinators. So yeah, so that is part one of today's planting, to cover for day 143 when I wasn't here. Um, and now to part two. For day 144, there's one of those sort of sayings occurs to me, which is that idea that the best time to plant a fruit tree is 20 years ago, the second best is today. Um, and because this spot will probably eventually get this tree in, just because of what we have around. So this is going to be a Suriname cherry, which is the Eugenia uniflora. And this is an area that gets water, it's also quite shady, which is exactly the sort of spot they tend to pop up in, especially because over the last couple of years I've established a few pieces of Calanco and the Euphorbia tithymoloides in here, which is why, incidentally, we won't be planting a toxic barrier with this one. Um, so this little guy will pop up here eventually, but if I get it in here now, then it's going to be two years closer to fruiting than if I wait two years for it to turn up by itself. Um, and also where I have the little seedings of these stored in bags, the chickens have decided it's a great place to go and kick them around. And this is actually one that when I came back from being away for two weeks was on its side, but somehow still alive because these are very resilient little seedlings, it seems. Um, and so I think I would reward it by putting it in soil. So this is gonna be going in with two companion plants, which are from quite different environments naturally. So we're gonna be going in with a little piece of the cataract palm, which is one of the Camadora, I think, uh, Camadora cataractarum. I think that might not be accurate, but anyway, this is a very small palm, which should form a nice little sort of up to sort of meter high in maximum sort of setting uh, ground cover, which will be quite nice and scenic, and it should be quite suited to this area because it's low lying, and during the rains, this is one of the areas that is most inclined to get very wet. Uh, because it's relatively low and so the water does pool here. It does sink through within a couple of hours because again we are on sand so even the biggest storms don't really sit on the surface for long. Uh, but then we're going to be putting in as a little bit of a succulent ground cover as per usual an aloe. This is aloe neariensis so it is much better suited to shady environments than a lot of the other ones we've been putting in. Um, 
but still it doesn't really want to be getting wet when it's injured so this is a piece that was pre-rooted and had of course been kicked out of the ground by the chickens uh, next to its mother plant so it should be doing better in the soil here a little bit wet around the base uh, for a couple of days than it would be doing just sort of dying dried out where the chickens have kicked it out of its out of its little spot so that should be everything for today. Uh, thank you very much for watching. I am sorry that I'm still sounding a little bit hoarse. I am still, I think, recovering from my little uh, ash and dust and virus experience. Um, and I am still using a bucket rather than a tripod because I still haven't retrieved it from my friend who has it. Uh, but thank you very much for watching and have a good one.